Hi, everybody. I just sent my husband a text to let him know I just purchased a 70 inch by 215 inch tablecloth. Do that math, it is just under 18 feet, a tablecloth that is 18 foot long. And I just, I honestly just had to sit here and crack up because there was a time not very many years ago when my furniture in my house was lawn chairs. It was outdoor furniture that we put in the house and everything else was what we called Attica which was the early marriage, whatever came out of your family's attic that they no longer wanted. And here I am about to host a giant Thanksgiving dinner party. Um, and I already have a table that my husband made custom and made it so we could add extra leaves into it beyond what came with it so that we could comfortably seat 12. And now I need, I need more, I need more space because our family is growing and our friends are growing and increase in bounty. And if you're around me, you know, I am all about the table, come to the table. So he's actually building me an additional wooden table to go to the end of our dining room table. And I want one long banqueting table, 18 feet of tablecloth coming right up. And I just thought, how cool is that? What a blessing of the Lord is that? Even to have that potential to have that many people in my home around my table feasting, it's such a picture of what the Father invites us to. And many of you, if you're just encountering me, you don't know, I came from incredibly humble beginnings. My husband and I both grew up, you know, kind of in a poverty situation. We both grew up living in a trailer. I used to play underneath the dirt. Tonka trucks in the dirt underneath our trailer because we didn't even have the little skirt around it. We just had the wheels. Um, and then we lived in duplexes up in Pennsylvania. It was basically where uh, an Amish or Mennonite farmer would take one of those old farmhouses and divide it. One of them, it was literally plywood between the doorways. And we could play fingers with the neighbors underneath. I know you could never get away with that now. They certainly weren't duplexes, but that's what we lived in. We rented homes. And uh, I was well into high school before my parents owned a home. And then, you know, uh, my husband and I, as we made our way in the world, we founded a business in 2005. Many of you know Palm Tree Productions. I help people publish books and do branding and motivational speaking. So 2006, uh, 2005, we founded the business. 2006, we made the big giant leap of faith, moved to Texas, and things really began to explode and take off for us. And we were beginning to really experience what it was like to have increase in our life. Um, things were going well. And then 2008, 2009, when everything crashed, you might remember that housing bubble burst and things crashed. And we had a series where right in a row, our nine largest customers uh, two of those, which were just absolute bread and butter. They, they're what kept the bread and butter going and then everything else was gravy. Well, nine in a row filed for bankruptcy. Um, and those businesses, when they filed for bankruptcy, meant they no longer had to pay us. And we weren't terribly wise in business at that time. We trusted everyone. All the people we were in business with were Christians, so surely. So we would extend these ridiculous, crazy terms to people without checking credit, without you know, we are so much smarter now. But anyway, nine in a row, boom, 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 bankruptcy out of business. So our, not only does our cash flow dry up, but these people went into bankruptcy, leaving us holding the bag for whatever books, CDs, DVDs. Um, we were doing some things where we were sending out CD and DVD of the month. So all the postage, all the shipping, all the raw materials, the printing, all of that. We still owed money for all of that. Boom, boom, boom. They went bankruptcy and couldn't pay us. So now we went upside down fast from being a cash positive business to being cash poor and in debt up to our eyeballs overnight. Because we had always, as soon as they paid us, we paid off. As soon as they paid off, we paid off. But when everyone stopped paying us, we had no money to pay off. So we went through a long season of really difficult financial times. It got ugly. And we still were in, at this moment, we were living, uh, we had a beautiful home uh, in Keller, Texas. We weren't sure exactly how we were going to keep paying the mortgage. And my husband and I, we lived through our savings. We cashed out whatever retirement we had. We went 11 months still working, not taking a paycheck. We just lived through everything and it got so hard. And I can remember, you know, spending time on the floor uh, in master bedroom. I would go in the closet and want the kids to see me. I'd go in the closet. So I'd shut the bedroom door, the bathroom door, the closet door. And I would just lay on my face and 
cry out to God and pray, where is this going to come from? I was industrious. I got up every morning. I got dressed, put on makeup. I called in customers from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I was ready to do business. Anything, I was willing to work hard. I was not willing to file for bankruptcy. I was going to pay off every debt, regardless of what had not been paid off for us. But it was just so tight. We didn't know where the next thing was going to come from, how it was going to happen. And, and one day, I'm just crying and complaining really blubbering in there because I did not know. You know, I was grocery shopping with a calculator, putting things back and deciding what I could do. I did not know how we were going to pay the mortgage payment. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. We didn't share it broadly with people. A few members of our family knew. Most of them did not. We showed up at church with the smiles on our faces and, uh, you know, it was just a hard time. And so you all know the story of Ruth and Boaz, how and Naomi brought Ruth and instructed Ruth, go walk around his field, glean, glean his fields. Boaz has enough. He's a, he's a distant relative. If you just glean his fields, you'll have enough to survive for your daily bread. So my prayer was, God, send us a Boaz. Send us a Boaz, someone, anyone, where, who we can serve. God, we'll serve them, their vision, their ministry, their business, whatever it is. We'll bring all of our talent, all of our hard work, all of our industry, all of our creativity. We want to just come alongside of Boaz, God, and I will be content to just glean the fields for daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. So, I, Father, bring us a Boaz. Bring us a Boaz. This was my heart's cry. This was my prayer. Please, God, bring us a Boaz. And uh, I didn't shut up a lot. I just kept repeating over and over again, and I'm praying, and I'm praying in the spirit, and I finally, you know, cry all the tears. I'm cried out. I'm on the floor. You know how you get after you've cried a lot, and you're like to the... <laughs> phase. Well, that's where I was. I was in that phase, just being quiet. And I heard God speak. And he looked at me in the way that only God can. And I heard him say, baby. Yes, dad, baby. Honey, I can bring you a Boaz. That's not a problem for me. I can bring you in proximity of a Boaz for you to serve. I can do that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, father. I'll keep my eyes open for Boaz. And God said, okay. If that's what you want, I can bring you in proximity of a Boaz. But wouldn't you rather be Boaz? Mind blown paradigm shift. What did you just say to me? Excuse me, what? Wouldn't I rather be Boaz? I had no grid for what that even meant because I grew up my whole life service, serving, serving others, serving the vision of other, of other uh, spiritual leaders, serving the vision for businesses. My whole business was built on serving businesses and ministries. Everything about me was to serve, to come alongside something bigger, something greater. I'm in the background. I was the girl who brought coffee in the green rooms and made sure speaking schedules are right. And the idea of being Boaz, I didn't even know how. I had no grid for what that meant or how to take that in. But I gave my yes to God. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd rather be Boaz. I could be Ruth and glean the fields. I think I'd rather be Boaz. What would that mean? What would that look like, God? And I gave him my yes. Yes, I want to be Boaz. Now, got up off that closet floor. My checkbook looked no different whatsoever. I still owed every bill that I owed. I had no extra income. Nothing was different about my circumstance or my situation, but my mind had changed. I went from begging God for please just give me something I can do to survive to, yes, I want to be Boaz. Teach me what that means. Help me step into that reality. And that shift began to change things in my life. And over the course of just a couple of years, things began to flip. Even the way we did business, we got smarter about how we did business. We got smarter writing contracts. We got uh, careful about what we did to make sure it was profitable, um, that in all labor, there is profit. It's a good thing to have profit in your business. You're not just like serving to scrape by. There's a good reason to have profit. And we began to change and shift how we did things. And I looked forward to the day when just being in my proximity would be a blessing. I began to claim that, Father, yes, the blessings of the Lord will chase me down and overtake me. And even those who just come into proximity will have a blessing. And I would stand in my closet in my prayer time and I'd make it rain in the spirit. I'd make it rain. I can't wait till I'm writing checks to other people or being around that people could come to my events 
and I will have staff and I will be able to pay people to come speak at my events. And I just began to shift my mindset and God began to bring it to pass. Now, when I said yes to God, I had no idea. It is a heck of a lot easier to be Ruth, y'all. It's a lot easier just to show up and work. Please tell me what to do and I will do it. Yes, this is my daily bread. Thank you, God. I thank you for this daily bread. Good Lord, good feast. Let's eat. Manna, pick it up every day. I'm, I don't worry about where it comes from. I'm just there. I, I take it. I consume it. I'm happy. I'm content in that Ruth mindset. Now, don't take that too far. But what I'm saying is it's a lot easier to just work and receive. It's a lot different when you when I stepped into that Boaz mind shift. Okay, now, because when you start working in order to be a blessing to others, that what you do creates enough that other people can receive and be a blessing, it changes the responsibilities go up. Increase brings an incredible increase of stewardship requirement, because now I'm dealing with like taxes and paperwork, 1099s and W9s and 941s and all the things to do with taxes and sales tax and now we need better and better equipment and now I got to make more planning and I've got to really structure pricing and so so becoming Boaz my I gave God my yes really without understanding what I was agreeing to Jehovah sneaky sometimes is like that because because if I had understood what it all meant I think I would have shrunk back and no I think I will just be content to be Ruth it's easier to be Ruth. I'm comfortable being Ruth. I'm good at being a servant. God said, you're supposed to be the entrepreneur. You're supposed to be the creator. You're supposed to be the kinsman redeemer that gathers up those who have no home, gathers up those who have no place to belong and, and build a tribe. So I gave my yes to God and increase has a price. Increase has a price, but I do not regret Ladies and gentlemen, I do not regret giving my yes to God and stepping into that Boaz reality, a Boaz anointing, whatever you want to call it. And now here, just when I did something as simple as I ordered an 18 foot long tablecloth so I can have one long table. And can I tell you at that table, it's going to be a, every place setting is a full set of china. And it's China that was given to me. I was given a set of China by a dear beloved friend whom I loved and served. And she gave me her wedding China when she gave it to me. It was 58 years old and I've now had it 25 or 30 years. And that pattern, you can't buy it anymore. But little by little, year by year, my husband as gifts and presents to bless me has gone to replacements limited. And every now and again, I get another place setting and I get another platter and I get the coffee server and I now have place settings. I can serve 16 people on China. This is China that I can give as a heritage, as a legacy to my children. That's so cool. And it is a result of saying yes to God. Yes, I'd rather be Boaz. I'd like to be the one creating the feast. I'd like to be the one picking up the tab. I'd like to be the one that organizes and draws people in instead of just fighting for my place at the table. If I can just serve so I could just feel like I could have some crumbs that I could just have some crumbs, that, uh, that orphan spirit of I've got to earn my place. And if I don't earn my place, I don't belong here. So I just want to encourage you, wherever you're at right now in your life, I don't know where you're at, but when I get to times of year like this, and I remember how things used to be, and I remember that even when I had nothing, I opened my home to whoever would come. Even when we had nothing and I had to scrape to figure out what to serve, even when it was on hodgepodge dishes. And I can remember one year where we had so many people for Thanksgiving, there was not one room in my house that could hold us all. We had to go out in the yard and we circled the entire yard with like 25 people to give thanks. And then we came inside and ate some in the dining room, some in the kitchen, some in the living room, some in the family room, some outside, wherever it was. Faithful, if you are faithful, you can ask. God, what do you see me as? And I want to invite you that if you've been in that Ruth mindset, waiting, waiting for someone that you could just serve, waiting for something to happen in your life. If you've been there, I want to encourage you to maybe give your yes to God and say, you know what? Yes, I'd like to be Boaz. God, I don't even know what that means. I don't feel today like I have the capacity or the understanding or the ability to step into that reality. There's so much I don't know. There's so much that it frightens me to think about what that could mean. But I'm telling you, I went on that journey with God and he took me faithfully day by day by day by day. There's no way I could have handled on day one 
what I'm handling now years later. No way. I didn't have the capacity. I didn't have the training. I didn't have the team. I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have anything I needed, but I gave my yes to God and he brought me faithfully to this place. So I'm going to be thinking about you when I'm setting that table and I'm laying out that 18 foot tablecloth and I'm setting those 16 places of China and all the glasses and dishes that go with it. When I'm preparing that feast, making that food and and just thinking about the blessing of the Lord, singing songs of praise to God because I am Boaz. Will you step into that reality with me? Will you say yes to God and say, yes, Lord, all things being equal, I'd rather be Boaz. God bless you.